All right, we're back with a better video today of the Anon 100D with Studio One. That's all on the left side. I have uh, five receivers up on five different bands. We'll take a little bit of a deeper look at that in a moment. Um, this is using the new um, EXTIO DLL by Andrea and we're gonna have a little fun with it today now on the right side I have the uh, flex 5000 running um, I'm actually using the RX loop to feed the Anon so this is all off of one antenna um, so that makes a sixth receiver um, I could turn on the second receiver uh, in the Flex uh, 5000 if I wanted to add another, but uh, that doesn't really make sense for this particular demo. And uh, as you'll see, it's a little bit unwieldy to manage um, all of these receivers. So your primary function or purpose or intent, if you will, uh, for wanting to do something like this is to do some band monitoring. So uh, if you look, uh, you can see that I can uh, actually monitor the activity uh, on the five different bands at one time uh, on the Anon in Studio One while I'm working on the uh, Flex uh, if I want to actually work some contacts. Um, so you can get a little bit better of an idea of uh, what it does. Um, I'm not advocating uh, Studio One, I'm just merely showing you a demo. Um, I think as an Anon user we have lots of good things ahead so um, looking forward to those and um, hopefully um, we'll see a lot of good things with CU SDR, Studio One, Power SDR, MRX. Um, I think a lot of people are discounting that but uh, I can see the developers uh, working on Power SDR, MRX are making great strides so uh, I think it'd be a big mistake to discount that. Um, because it, it's basically fully functional right now, so um, that's really nice to have that. All right, so uh, let's dig in a little bit. Let's turn up some audio. Here. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about what we've got going here. So when you launch Studio One, uh, Andreas uh, has, uh, Andrea, I'm sorry, has uh, created a DLL. Um, he's done this uh, and he's going to share the, the source so this is really nice but um, the initial interface you get will be one of these Studio One boxes here um, along with this DLL uh, dialog box. So you can see he's got the uh, 384, uh, 192, uh, 96, and 48. Um, this may be hard to see, so I'm going to break this video up into pieces. Uh, but for now, I just want to give you a, a large-scale overview, and then uh, I'll stop this video and uh, splice it in another video where we'll uh, focus on one specific screen so you can see it better. Uh, if it's coming down too hard, I can start praying. So, <laughs> oh, at any rate, uh, let me give it back to you, Bob. You might want to call around and uh, see if anything that will talk to you again later. Uh, 73 for now. Uh, break with you. Uh, kilowatt Delta 6, Indy Echo Bravo. Dan, what's your time like? All right. Uh, what I've done is uh, I've zoomed in on uh, four of the receivers so you can see what it's uh, like on one screen to be monitoring uh, four different bands. Um, I believe I told you that uh, each time you spin up uh, an instance of Studio One, you'll get a box. Um, that'll allow you to uh, to configure a full range of features for any one uh, virtual uh, server that's bound to a physical server on the radio. Um, we'll explore those in a little more in detail, but um, I just wanted to give you an idea of what the screen looks like. Um, and this is a, uh, I believe this is a 21 inch uh, display, so we're set at um, 1680 by, uh, by I believe, uh, I'm sorry, 16, uh, 1600 by um, 1280 I believe is the resolution on this display right now, so uh, gives you a little bit of an idea of the uh, dimensions of it. 
Um, as I said, you can spin up uh, second receivers, so uh, um, this is on the same band. And uh, I need the actual uh, physical receiver box that goes with it. So you can see I could just put that in there, for example. And uh, we can turn off mute. And uh, I'm assured that uh, I thought I could develop a problem there, which I could certainly do it all. into a signal we can uh, translate here all right so um, see we're doing a little bit of mo uh, band monitoring here you can see uh, we're pretty quiet on 15 uh, on 12 and uh, on to 10 so um, gives you a little idea there all right we'll uh, stop this video and we'll dig into uh, studio one a little bit all right, we're back. We're on uh, 17 meters right now. And uh, I have uh, a lot of the dialogue boxes uh, open here on um, Studio One uh, so that you can see this a little bit better. So uh, basically we have the main uh, res uh, navigation box, if you will. Uh, we've got the receiver. You can see we can do upper side band, lower side band, dual side band, CW, FM, SAM, AM. You can see we've got our uh, filter size as far as listening. Um, we've got no noise blankers. Um, you can see that works pretty well. You can turn that off. We've got notch filters. Um, Got your squelch, mute, volume level, EGC, um, pretty much uh, most of what you would expect. Um, down below, uh, we can open up some of the settings. You can see um, you've got your uh, detailed AGC here, um, SAM, RDS. Cat control has uh, been built in, um, so um, this is a little different than you might expect. Uh, so um, you have to think of, of Studio One um, really as a radio uh, when you think about cat control. Um, so just kind of food for thought. I'll let you look that up. You can download the manual and read more about that. All right, just going through these a little bit. Um, as far as the spectrum uh, window goes, um, you could look at the pan adapter only. You can look at the waterfall only. Um, you can do the split traditional view, um, and then you can do the combo view, which is what I like. Um, so um, lots of uh, options as far as that goes um, in configuring how you want to see the display. Uh, you've got uh, various ways to look at it, WinRAD. Um, you can look at it as uh, Spectran. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm changing the wrong window. That's why this isn't really doing much here. That's changing the upper window, which is the, more of the zoomed in uh, view of it. So we can go through WinRAD. let you see a little bit of it scroll out you can do spectran just 
just let you see the various modes here. And Linrad, which is uh, really my favorite. We can adjust the uh, spectrum base very easily. Can adjust the contrast. You can see that uh, turn the contrast way down. We can go to the opposite extreme, turn it way up. Can adjust the range. If you look over here on the left, you'll see this is basically moving. You can get very detailed if you want. You can also speed up the waterfall, the refresh rate. Slow it down. You can fill your line. Maybe turn that contrast down a little bit. Um, lots of functionality. I, I won't go into it all, but that'll give you a little bit of a, a flavor of it. All right, uh, I wanted to, I had to actually go look in the manual on how to remember how to use the notch filters, and I wanted to show you that uh, they're a little different, uh, but they're actually really nice. So uh, basically, um, this uh, zoomed in um, spectrum window, um, the auxiliary is really nice for that. Uh, so uh, when you uh, deploy a notch filter, you can see a line pops up. Um, you can deploy multiples if you want. But uh, let's say you have one and you want to set uh, the location of it. You hold down the shift key and uh, now you can just move the notch anywhere you want. Um, so that's basically how the notch filter works and uh, they're very effective. So I uh, wanted to give you a little brief uh, tour of that. Um, well, my intent uh, wasn't to give you a complete tutorial on Studio One. It was just to give you a, uh, an overview. Um, you can see we could also record here if we wanted. I guess I can cover that a little bit. Um, this is great. You can actually replay this back um, as well. Um, not not just the audio, but you can replay the, the spectrum, so it'll record that for you as well. Um, again, you can find out more information about Studio One at uh, Woodbox uh, Radio. And I uh, highly recommend if you're interested, you download the user guide and take a look through that. And uh, it'll do a much better job of covering all the functionality. So uh, uh, my apologies if I've uh, misspoke uh, on anything here. Um, again, I don't use this package much. Um, I, I bought it to, to use with my KX3. And um, I know uh, Sandra is working on some cat control and some things that... Uh, will make that a much more interesting uh, package for me and uh, as Andrea works on the DLL here um, we'll see uh, where that leads to as well so there you have it uh, just a short uh, video um, also put this up just so you can see the DLL dialog box a little bit better we looked at it large in the beginning um, so this will give you a little bit of uh, a better look at uh, the work uh, that Andrea has done so I hope you found this video useful and um, look for some more videos up the road and uh, my apologies for the previous video uh, the quality was just really low so uh, hopefully this one will do a lot more uh, give me a lot more detail on it this is uh, November India Zero Zulu and uh, I'll be clear with you thanks 73